Hey folks, Rod here from Wine Country Camera. And on the second episode of Unfiltered, we're here with David Brookover in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, in his gallery. And I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about what it takes to get to the, the final print and mm -hmm. uh, just talk about fine, the fine art aspect of photography. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I lived in Japan for a long time, 15 years. And probably the one lesson I learned from the Japanese was presentation, presentation. It's all about that. In America, we say location, location, which is also valuable. But uh, when you, you know, f it's a, it was a gradual transition for us. We started out in year 2001 here at the gallery. And we did all color work, basically, uh, digital output, mostly from 8x10 view camera. I uh, had my images scanned. And then eventually we moved into silver gelatin printing and platinum plating printing and bromo oil printing and photogravure printing and now we're also doing gum bichromate platinum prints. Again, you're, you're, you're finding the paper, the printer, and then the hand wrap mats, the type of glass, the perfect frame, and then you have that package. So let's talk a little bit about, tell me about um, the, the selection of paper. Yeah. Okay. Just a, a kind of a brief overview because we're not talking about just off the shelf stuff here. No, 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 no. Uh, when I was living in Japan, I was always in love with Japanese fabrics and also paper. And so for platinum plating printing, because there's a long wash down cycle, uh, you have to have something that obviously can take the wash down cycle and uh, will hold the platinum plating solution when you brush it on, won't tear, won't fall apart. So we've usually settled on two types of paper, Kozo and Gompi paper from Japan. Both these papers have been around for about 2,000 years, the style of printing. And, the, and am I correct in saying that the Gompi and the Gozo, it's a Kozo, fiber, yeah. it's a type it's a of fiber. It's, it's a, a fiber. type of fiber. Yeah, a Gompi is made from an inner bark of mulberry uh, trees. Okay. But actually they're just shrubs, they harvest them, and they usually cut them out about one meter. They're usually about maybe inch, inch and a half thick. And they steam them, peel them, and then they, um, well, they cook them in an alkaline solution. And it's about a six month process wow. from, from start harvest, which is usually in December. And you have the final paper usually in the summer months. Okay. And, and you get paper that's made just for you. Yeah, right? we have families in Japan that make papers for us. And uh, also the uh, Gompi paper is made. That one, we don't have a family who makes it for us, but almost all of that paper is handmade. It's very hard. It's it only, they can only harvest it in the wild for some reason. Um, and you can't print that large. It's usually a 16 by 20. It's about as large as you can go with a copy paper. I think some people have printed larger, but we usually stop there. The Kozo paper, we've gone up to 41 inches length and 29 and a half inches uh, width and a height. So, um, but, uh, and also there's another paper we use, which is uh, Arches Platine. There's a Revere paper too. There's a Hanamil paper, but we usually use the Arches Platine, which was made specifically for platinum paper. Mm -hmm. and, and printing. And tell the audience a little bit about the difference between the platinum, platinum palladium mm -hmm. printing mm -hmm. versus silver gelatin. And, so oh, gelatin so, is what we yeah, think about right. when we think about like either your high school dark room right. or Ansel Adams, right? Right, I mean, it's, right, right. Yeah. It's sort of yeah, yeah. analog paper, An Ansel right? Ansel Adams, you know, yeah, exactly. Avidon, you know. Um, well, the silver papers are already pre-coated for you. So there's two types, the bad types, the RC paper. So you stay away from that and then you go with the uh, fiber-based papers. Uh, and like I say, then you take the image and you'll either project it, or if you're shooting digital, then you'll make a negative and you do a contact. So if you're doing a 30 by 40 inch print, you have to print a 30 by 40 inch negative, contact it, glass, shoot it that way. So you're trying to perfect your negative rather than the printing aspect of it. Oh, wow. Whereas if you got a negative, then you're dodging and burning and everything else I for that, see, with I the see. silver paper. The platinum paper, we actually make Platinum. We get the um, solutions from Bostic Sullivan in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and there's about five compounds we combine, and then we brush it in to the paper. It soaks, it dries, and then we will, again you put the negative on top, 
and the glass and you vacuum frame and then you uh, use UV units of light not time like you would with this with the silver print Got it. you know seconds it's like an units EV. of light it's yeah. an exposure value of right. UV right exactly wow. and it's always fun because you start out well how many units do you think it is 118 124 I don't know what you know you mean it's it's sometimes you're up to 300 plus units in uh, that it takes time and also Depending upon how much you warm up the developer, you can get that warmer look. How much palladium's in it mm. compared to platinum, um, and the and not, one's not necessarily better than the other. No, right? No, no, no. It's a it's it's the feel for the subject. Sometimes you're lucky and they'll overlap. You can print a silver and a platinum. Sometimes you look at a, a foggy scene. You go, that has to be a platinum. It has to be on this paper. You know, and uh, it really works. Yeah. Um, most people are very familiar with silver printing because, again, college, high school, you know, especially my age. Um, oh, I was in there. Yeah, yeah. I was exactly. a lab assistant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now it's it's kind of sad because a lot of younger folks come into the gallery and they'll go, "Oh my God, what kind of printer you use that?" And I go, uh, "Us." <laughs> you know, it's it's dark room, and so there is a renewed interest in it, which is good because. For luminance and luminosity, it's just hard to beat a silver print, but for that subtleness, uh, and plus with the platinum also, compared to the silver, you need so little light. A lot of people, just the natural ambient light of the room is enough to have it glow. Hmm. Permanence wise, you know, platinum is just basically, it's a noble metal, it's indestructible. Yeah. They've done testing up to 1500 years and just stop and go, well, it's not going anywhere. It yeah. just depends on how good a paper you use. Yeah. So, yeah. And the, the, the was it the inkjet mm -hmm. printers mm -hmm. have come a long way, They've right? They've come a long ways. Yeah. And, and what is it about it that's gotten better? Is it the paper? Is the it papers the substrate? Have got, right. Is it the, 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 the coating? The substrates are getting better too. The coating on the papers are getting better. Uh, people are getting better at printing that the software has dramatically improved right. you know um, the only the noticeable difference is with ink jets you're looking at pigment with the historical process you're looking at metals so silver platinum palladium but the, the luminous reflectance is a little bit different hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, gosh, the inkjets have really come a long, long ways. Yeah. But there's also the factor of collectors. Right. And the collectability. The collectability. And a lot of collectors want that handmade print. Yeah. They want. Well, there is yeah. something. I mean, you've got the prints upstairs that's mm -hmm. the palladium, or pl platinum, palladium, and uh, a silver. Mm -hmm. And people react to each one very right, differently right. Yeah. emotionally. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a 50-50, right? Some people yeah, go, I, know. I like that one. Yeah, you, you, you'll you see like this, we have this one, for example, image of layers of silence. I think the silver print is like 10,000. And like even yesterday, you said, I prefer that. Yeah. But the platinum we've sold all but the last one, which is 75,000 now, but obviously that's sold more than the silver. Yeah. So it's not the price, it's the mood that it evokes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a self-admitted snob, so I should like the platinum <laughs> palladium, right? But I like the silver. It yeah. just, it, it speaks to well, me. Well, I, I, you know, I kind of go like by days, like, well, God, it does look really good as a silver. I, I'm not quite sure, you know, then like, but it's really good as a platinum too. I think it also depends upon the colors of their home and the, well, the walls and, you know, right. what, you know, you never know what a collector, yeah. Uh, and, and tell me about the transition for you as a, as a shooter yeah. from what you're primarily known as, mm -hmm. as an 8 by 10 shooter, right, right. into being a, a medium format and yeah. even in, yeah. in a lot of cases a 35 millimeter yeah. digital shooter yeah. Yeah. where you shoot your, uh, uh, right. all the animals. So such. when I opened the gallery in 2001, I had prior to that I'd worked for Fujifilm for quite some time. Uh, in in Tokyo, so during that last phase of shooting for them, everything I was shooting was eight by ten. So my portfolio was that. I mean, I started out thirty five and did a little bit of medium format, and then went to a large format, and that was just it. And I shot for years and years. And when I came here, I knew that I had to switch back to film or something in thirty five because I had to photograph animals. And you're not going to do that with an 8x10. Right. Well, at that time, film was pretty much dead in 35 millimeters, so it didn't make much sense. So I switched to digital with the uh, Nikon D3X at that time. Great camera. 2008. 
and uh, I wanted to fill the walls, you know, just because you want to have something representation, especially in this area with the bears and the buffaloes, the wolves and the bobcats. And uh, I started shooting that. Probably spent about, oh gosh, seven or eight years doing mostly that. The 8x10, I picked it up occasionally, but not too often. But like every good thing, you know, you want to go back to it. So now I'm starting to shoot the 8x10 again for, for cert a certain look. Because you, you want to change as an artist, too. You, know, you want to, you know, there's a certain look that 8x10 has that you can't get with 35 or, 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 or you know, even your larger uh, megapixel medium format cameras. I mean, they, they certainly are every bit as sharp, probably, but the look is different, you know, with yeah. the 8x10. You yeah. know, your huge lenses, you know, a 480 or 600 millimeter lens, but the angle of view is like an 85 millimeter and a 35. Right. You know? So it's yeah. it's just a different look. And you know? how about the compositional aspect of being under the, right. the hood and everything? Yeah, everything's upside down and reverse. So it still is your mind, it's quiet, it's very methodical. Because of that, I really wanted to get away from it for a while because I was, I caught myself being very methodical and very stiff. And I thought, you know, I have to, I gotta lighten up and loosen up. Yeah, so let's yeah. get a little more, you know, let's get the smaller formats and be, you know, yeah, a little yeah. more loose. A little loose, yeah. Well, I think that yeah. the animals throughout the uh, throughout the gallery add mm -hmm. a, a, a nice balance to the majesty of the of yeah. the big prints. You yeah. know, I mean, I'm definitely not known as a wildlife photographer, and I see some of the other work people do and go, "Wow, that's really good." You know, I, we have some. We have some popular images here. I think my best wildlife ones have certainly not action. I'm not an action photographer. You right. know, it's like it happened and I got it a week later. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, some of the guys that I see, wow, their work is just. But my best-selling wildlife have always been more still contemplative. So that's still mm -hmm. the eight by ten part. Like we have this one image, uh, Silent Storm, which is just a buffalo next to a hot springs and and it's very foggy and the mist are coming up so it's just a silhouette of the buffalo but that's how i would see it you know right. because i guess speed isn't my you know my niche but uh it, it was popular as a platinum print but you know you need that in your gallery too yeah. just for kind of a little yeah. bit of everything yeah yeah you can't yeah. just have the uh oh, yeah. the big bold yeah. monster right. images right right because then i guess yeah. the, it's not approachable for people, right? We or, get labeled that way too. You yeah, know, you know, and you have to. It'd be it'd be like you know the Rolling Stones singing the same five songs all right. the time, right? You got so to so branch out. We we've been shooting all week. Mm -hmm. We've been up at four in the morning. Oh yeah, and it seems like you're still gusto all the way. Like let's. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> I think this is our third one today, right? Next third. door, cowboy coffee. Yes. Cowboy coffee, Jackson, Wyoming. Mm. Well, well, you know, I mean, we, you still have a, a zest for the sh the shoot, right? Yeah. Well, I and I I get inspired by being around people like you and Joe DeFigli, who was here. Yeah, it's just fun to be out with people. Yeah. You know, and and oh my God, look at this, look at this. You know, so and it's not a, it's we have sort of a long drive to get here, but it's it's still it's fun to be out. You yeah. Know? And there's some days you go out and you go. Oh, why did I get up at four o'clock? It's just clear skies because you really don't know what's going to happen. But when it does happen, like the other day, um, we could tell the viewers we sat by the Snake River watching it flow for four hours, and we probably got three or four shots, you know, that we really liked yeah. because the the light was coming behind the Grand, and then we'd sit and wait, and then the Grand would pop out, and we'd shoot a little bit, but. Wow, that was the fastest four hours I've had in yeah. a long time. Yeah. You know, it was, that was it's just great. It's great to be out with people doing that too. Well, and yeah. then you know, my story, my takeaway for the week is, you know, I, I flew whatever fifteen hundred miles to get here. Yeah. We go out to some pond in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and, and to get the shot, you're yeah. like yeah. pants off in the underwear, yeah, leeches yeah. all yeah. over your legs, yeah, like God, heading out into the water. Yeah. And I'm standing on the shore, going, "Okay, I went, I went fifteen hundred miles." But I'm not going the last 50 feet, you know? <laughs> Especially after seeing the Legion. You know, yeah, like, right. So, yeah. you know, that's, uh, I yeah. can see for sure why uh, you got the shot, well, was, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, that was, fun. You got to yeah, invest in that for sure. But it's, uh, you know, the thing is, with it's a very humbling profession. You, you have to have thick skin, especially as a gallery owner, because you're going to hear the criticisms or you're going to, you know, and, and then again, the opposite, the adulations for, for what you do. Uh, you can't let it get to you. You know, you just 
thank you. You know, you have to, gratitude. But yeah. um, uh, you also, you, you know, you have to network with your, your clients and appreciate your clients and know them when they come back. Right. And uh, it's like any business, you know. You're yeah. you're you're doing everything. You you're clientele. mopping the floors. Yeah. You are. You're like, boy, you're, you're doing it all. You're doing it all. <laughs> and finding good help and people who love what you do, enthusiasm sells. Um, you'll always sell more than anybody else because they want to buy from you. But um, it's you know it's a it's a good life. I just there's not as many people that do it nowadays. I think the, the market is so saturated with. YouTube and well, yeah, Facebook. It's, it's the Facebook and, world, right? Oh my God, you know. But, but that's why when you come to Jackson, mm -hmm. and people, when you come to Jackson Hole, please mm -hmm. go to the Brookover Gallery. Yeah, it's What uh, you've got here is really something special. I mean, the, uh, the first time I walked into the gallery, my jaw was on the floor. I go, I just didn't know that, that photography was could that be was, like this. That was and color then. The, the old you know, big color work. And now since then, we've the gallery is... Well, there's probably what about 85 images or something, or uh, yeah, quite a few. A bunch, I think yeah. we have three color ones, and that's it. You know, it's all yeah. historical. So, uh, yeah, you have to change with the times, and you have to stay ahead of the curve, right? You know, right? Um, and try and create a little niche market for yourself. Yeah. The word will get out. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um, it's um, it's a good job. Yeah, it's a good yeah. gig. It's a, it's a good gig. Well. <laughs> Except for that 4 a.m. wake up. <laughs> yeah, that's not so bad. Well, yeah. thanks for hosting me you this bet. week. Yeah, thanks it for having me. It has been mind. just magical to get out. And yeah, I've taken and, and your filter incredible. system. You know, Rod told me about his filter system. Thank you very for much. Some time. Yeah, and that's. Uh, I've had a lot of fun using wow. it this week. Yeah, I didn't want to push it on the show. No, you know, no, no but, it's, uh, that's. Yeah, it's been even for me as a, as a user. I've been going. Wow, this thing really works yeah, really well. Yeah, so that, it's that, been really fun. That polarizer, and it's just so easy to use. And you know, I, that's why I never had a filter system until I saw yours. Because you'd see these guys just like struggling with the, you know, certain plastic ones. And yeah, you know, I go, that this is not fun. I'm just gonna get something that'll screw in and work. You yeah. Know? But you got it down now. You yeah, know, and thanks. It's, it's I, I appreciate that. It yeah, it's been it's really, it's been a lot of fun out here shooting. I've been just having a blast. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's good. Good, stuff. good time. You got to come back in the fall now. You bet. We so get chased another time by something. <laughs> no more leeches. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> Who would have thought leeches when in in freezing water? You know, it's like my legs were numb. But hell, well. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thanks Thank again you. for coming out. The unfiltered video series is produced by Wine Country Camera, manufacturers of the world's finest filters and filter holder systems. Visit our blog at www.winecountry.camera to learn how to improve your photography by using filters. We've got a ton of great content on the way, so be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel.